Let's have a look at how to answer six marker questions in GCSE physics. So over here we have a diagram of an experiment to determine the specific heat capacity. We have a little electrical heater that's connected to a voltmeter and then an ammeter. We have the following data, the energy input to the heater, which is given as 12,000 joules, and the increase in thermal energy, which is 8,400 joules. Explain how the student uses the equipment to obtain the data. The first really, really important tip with six markers is not to panic and to read things really carefully. I would also highlight what we need to do. So in this case, we need to answer how the student obtained the data in the table. And I'm just going to highlight that. They're also telling us what they want, include any extra equipment which is potentially used and explain how the quantities are actually calculated. Our next step is crucial and that is to think what equations are involved in the six marker. Well, in this case, because we want to find the energy input into the heater and that is electrical energy, we have to look at those equations. So energy is power times time, but electrical power is just potential difference times current. And this directly links to our first set of marks that we're going to get for our measurements. We're going to measure the potential difference, or V in this equation, with a voltmeter. We're going to measure the current with a nanometer, and then we're going to measure the time, T, with a stop clock. Now, what about our next equation? That is the increase in thermal energy store of the water. For this, we'll need to use our specific heat capacity equation. The equation for the increase in thermal energy is just the specific heat capacity equation, which is mass times specific heat capacity, which is known for water, multiplied by the change in temperature. Okay, now out of these, we'll need to measure the mass. And the way we will do that is with a top pan balance, we're going to measure the mass of the empty beaker first, add water, measure again, then subtract the readings. Typically, what I have in brackets here is not necessarily required. However, I quite like to add it just to show the examiners that you really know how to do this experiment. We're going to measure the temperature change with a thermometer. After we have those measurements, the next step is really crucial to get those top marks and that is to provide some more detail on how to do the experiment really well and really safely. For instance, we need to write down that the heater needs to be fully immersed in the water. This will allow as little energy to be wasted and also the experiment will be safer. Also, under no circumstances should we touch the heater for safety because we don't want to get burnt. We also want to allow time for each temperature reading. If we're using a non-digital thermometer, it will take a little bit of time for the reading to rise up to the appropriate amount. And afterwards, it is the most important step and that is the final calculation. And we need to quote an equation of all the things that we've measured. So for instance, the energy that's been inputted to the heater, which is well, this one here, will be calculated with the potential difference times the current multiplied by the time. And the thermal energy store of the water will be calculated using this equation. If we follow these steps, we should be able to apply them to almost any six marker out there. Doing six marker questions is all about practice. And this is precisely why you absolutely need to have a look at this next video on six markers that will lead right over here to ensure that you get my best mark in the exam.